Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced React WooCommerce Theme Development with REST API. So in the previous video, we started building the comment form. If you haven't watched the previous video, please watch the previous video first because this is a continuation of that. And now we're going to continue further building the comment form. So I'm going to go back to this and just copy this one from the comment form.js. So I'll pass it over here and just import this component up top. Okay, so that has been imported up top. Brilliant. So, uh, of course, we're going to need the handle on change function. So let's pass that. Again, we'll build that in some time, but just passing it here. Okay. So handle on change, then you have input.errors, input.comment. Uh, we're going to be passing all of that. Uh, right now, we don't have these values, but we'll have that in, in some time. Okay, now. Um, inside of the text area function or the component, uh, we have this error and abbreviation components. We need to build those as well. So inside of the form elements, we'll create uh, another file called error.js. And inside of the error.js, so form elements slash error.js. Okay, so inside of this, just a component accepting errors and the field name. If there are errors um, and the field name contains that property, we're just going to pass the invalid feedback uh, class and then pass on to uh, basically the error that it's been outputted and just return the error, okay, inside of a div. All right, so if the field has the error, then we'll just display that. So that's what's happening inside of the error component and that error goes away now. And then we require the abbreviation component. So I'll copy that, create another file called abbr.js, paste it. And all this is doing is just basically uh, checking if the required attribute is passed. And if it's passed, then it'll continue further. Use abbr tag and uh, just some styles and then We'll say required and then pass that star. Okay, so that's all that happens inside of the abbreviation component. And we're using the abbreviation component here. Um, so we never have to bother about this because all we have to do is just pass required, true or false, and then abbreviation component is going to handle that whether it's supposed to render that asterisk or not. Similarly, for errors also, we don't need to worry about anything. Just pass the field name and the errors and it'll automatically handle whether that it's supposed to show the error or not. So that way we are isolating, we're kind of abstracting the uh, complexity into uh, making, uh, basically abstracting the complexity into simplicity, okay? Um, so keeping things simple basically for you, all right? So that's your text area. Uh, moving on, coming back to your comment slash index.js. Sorry, uh, now we go to comment form form dot js so we're done with the text area uh, now we're going to need this div element so come over here and then pass the div element and inside of this div we need an input element so we'll put the input element and let's create the input element as well uh, input component so we'll create another file inside of the um, form elements called input.js. Uh, we could have used some libraries also uh, for this, for this forms and all that, but I don't, I want to keep it light. I don't want any unnecessary things bundling up, uh, just keeping things simple yourself, custom build. So yeah, so that's why I'm not using any libraries for these forms. Cool. So let's do the input element. So let's take a look form elements slash input okay here it is so again i'm going to copy this i'm 
Okay, so what's happening here? Let's see. Again, um, similar to text area, we have handle on change function, input value, label, errors, placeholder, all of those things. Uh, similar to text area, we have the label, abbreviation, we have the input element, uh, HTML tag, on change event, value, placeholder, type, name, class, and input ID. And then you have the errors. All right. So all we have to do now is just, first of all, import the comment form. There you go. That's imported. That's inside of your uh, comments index.js. And then inside of the comment form, import the input as well. Click on import. And it should have been imported on top. Oops. It's imported from post. Yes, we don't want that. Import it manually, input, and then from form elements. Brilliant. Okay, so now that we have uh, this input element, uh, let's also again go back to comments forms.js and then <coughs> pass another input for email. So we're done with the author. Let's do it for uh, email. Then we're going to do for the website, another input element outside of this div tag. We're just placing inside of div tags because we want uh, like the uh, author and the email to be f taking 50-50% of width uh, inside of the grid. That's why we place them that there. URL, we want the full width. That's why we're placing it outside of that grid. Okay, so website, URL, errors, all of that. And then we want to do the submit button. So we'll pass the submit button here okay so again this will be a standard input html element we don't really need the component for this one so it'll be standard type equal submit okay uh it has certain elements uh that we need to pass we'll come back to that but let's go ahead and add these functions first which is your handle on change okay so going on top so here we have the handle input handle on change so we're going to bring that on top so where we have the handle on, handle on change, we'll replace that with this function. What this does is it takes the event, um, uh, ignore these for now, and then pulls the target out of it, um, and then uses the set input function, and then passes the new state. Okay, and the new state will be equal to, in case if it's equal to checkbox, then uh, we're just spreading the original input and passing the target dot name and then reversing the value so that it can be if it was true it becomes false if it is false it becomes true otherwise we're just spreading the previous input value and just saying target dot name equals target dot value so if this was email uh, this will become email colon whatever the value of email was let's say coditech uh, at gmail.com so that that becomes the value so it takes the previous input. So if the previous input had like a uh, name and then URL, all of those stuff, it'll take that so that it doesn't change those values, but it'll change the one in question. So if uh, let's say this, uh, this function was called for name, then it's going to only change the name property. Rest all the properties will remain the same. Just doing this conditionally because for checkbox, we don't really require the, the value which is there in the checkbox element. We actually require true or false. It will be clear to you when we build the checkbox component. I just wanted to let you know that it exists. Okay. Uh, I'm going to comment uh, these out for now. We don't, we don't need this at the moment. But coming back, we require the submit button class. So let's get hold of that. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to place that on the top and then import the CX from class names. Okay. And then we're going to need the loading and stuff because when we are submitting the form, we need to show some kind of a loading state to the user, like while the request is being sent via the REST API. So we're going to need that. Okay. I'll put that. So set loading, loading, right? Uh, the reason why we require a different set of submit button classes is because while a request is being made, let's say user submits the form, user comes over here, uh, user you know writes the comments and fills up all of the form and then posts the comment. Now, when he clicks on post comment, when the request is being made to the REST API to uh, basically uh, post a request uh, to submit the comment, at that point of time, we don't want this button to be active. Uh, we want it to be shown to the user is disabled 
so that's why we want uh, the classes to be different at that point. Uh, so using the CX from the library class names, we are able to render a different class or change the value of the submit button classes depending on the value of the loading. So if it's not loading, we want to just say cursor pointer. So you user sees this pointer like this uh, hand that you're seeing. Uh, if, if, but if it's loading, we don't want cursor to be, um, we want the cursor to be not allowed and we want it to change its color uh, of this button. So it gives a feeling to the user that something is happening. Like this is not usable, it's like disabled, okay? So that's the reason of using the submit button class and that's what you're passing inside of the submit button. And then we are using disabled uh, property and if the loading state is true, which means if the request is in process, we are disabling this button. So that's what happens there. Okay. So that's what it is. And uh, moving on. Now we're going to um, basically on the submit of the form. So we'll go to the handle submit form function now. So this is our handle submit form function. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is just copy these comments. So when the form is submitted, this function is will be called up top here. Okay. So first thing we do is we do event dot prevent default because we don't want the default behavior of the form where we don't want the page to be refreshed and stuff. Uh, we want the JavaScript to handle that part. Then we want to do a validation, right? So for that, um, we want to validate and sanitize the comment form, which means whatever the values the user is entering, we would want that um, those values to be validated and sanitized. We don't want any malicious information to be passed to your backend. And uh, we had built this. Remember, like when we were doing the checkout form, we had built this. Uh, for our checkout form, similar to that, we have to do this, this for the comments form also. So you go to this uh, validator in comments.js and then copy this whole thing. Okay, and then inside of your directory validator, you create a file called comments.js. We're just keeping things separate to keep things simple. Paste it. Just importing the validator is empty, all of that stuff. Just creating this function which takes data. Um, it initializes errors and sanitized data. So this will contain uh, errors, if any. And then this will contain the sanitized data. Okay. We're saying data.comment, data.author, data.email, .url. Checking is empty and just setting its value to whatever it was. Then this function basically checks for the errors if required is true, adds errors and sanitized data to the errors and sanitized object. Takes the field name, error content, min and max, type, required or not. Then um, using the validators library functions, this is all I've already explained in the checkout video. If you haven't seen that, I suggest go ahead and watch that when we're building the checkout form. So I'm going to just go over it, won't be going deep into it because I've already explained all of this. It's similar to that. So with the validator function, we check the length, uh, min and max, and required or not. And inside of the errors, uh, we ask the field name and we just say this. So in case if it's not valid, we inside of the error object with that field name. So error dot, let's say there was an error on the name. So error dot name becomes equal to um, whatever the content of the error was, whatever the user has. So we say like the name must be between so and so characters. Similarly for email, we check uh, the validator.email. So this function already checks uh, the add sign and all of that if it's a valid email. So kind of save all the trouble of verifying it ourselves. Similarly is URL check if, if the value that you're passing for an input element is a URL or not, and then passes the error. Okay, so that's, that's all that's happening here. Uh, if it's required, then it'll just uh, show this error message. If there are no errors, it's going to call the uh, functions that validate and escape. So uh, for the field name, it trims it. Then it normalizes the email if the type is email. And then escapes the, uh, the data and sanitizes it. And then finally, we call this function for each of these. Comment, author, email, and URL. 
and then finally return the sanitized data any errors and if it is valid is true or not so if there are no errors is valid becomes true so that's all that's happening in this particular function okay so i'm going to go ahead and import that up top and i'm going to see how that looks so far okay great so you can see now that we have a leave a comment your email address will not be published comment name email website and you have the post or comment button all of that is coming from this function right so i think we'll stop here now uh, since this video is already becoming too long and in the next video we will continue further uh, adding the functionalities for this particular form so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and uh, please uh, start my repository to support my work and follow me on github my github handle is imran sayyad and uh, do sign up for the membership uh, to get more perks all right thank you very much bye bye